What's going on, Will Freeman? RevolutionaryLifestyleDesign.com talking to you today about why you should quit smoking weed, especially if you're young. So by that I mean 18 to 25, okay? And uh, I know I might get some heat on this one. I know a lot of guys are into their weed or they're into being psychonauts, they're doing the psychedelic drugs. Uh, but before you jump down my throat, uh, I'm gonna be speaking to you from personal experience as my experience as a pothead. Also, make sure to finish the video where I'm gonna give you the exception for guys where I don't think it's too big of a deal to smoke a bit of weed, okay? So it's never a black and white with me, I'm just saying in general. I think it's a good idea to get rid of weed, especially if you're young, especially if you haven't started to build your business, especially if you're not on the path and you know starting to get in shape and, and on that personal development path, especially important not to have weed during that, during that period. And again, I'm speaking, I was a 20 year old pothead. Um, I remember the day, I'd smoked weed a bit in high school, but I remember the day I bought it for the first time in university, the, the guy who delivered the pitas for us asked if we want weed. My roommate and I turned to each other, we were like, yeah, sure. Second, second we smoked that, we were, we were smoking pot every day, right? Because now we're away from home. Before you can only get it occasionally and you smoke it at a party or whatever. But now it's like we had the connection, we're away from home, we're like, this is great, we're gonna smoke all the time, okay? Within a month I was failing out of school. Um, I was not going to the gym. I was smoking a ton of cigarettes in my room. I was leaving food all over the place. My diet went to hell, I put on weight because I'm high all the time, so of course I wanna eat everything in sight. I blew a ton of money, I blew my mom's money, um, and by the end of it, I failed out of school and uh, I started to get really paranoid. I started to hear footsteps behind me when I walked. Um, auditory hallucinations. Prior to that, prior to um, hearing those auditory hallucinations, I, uh, I, I, I would feel like I was coming up across a line that if I stepped over a mental line, it wouldn't be good. Like just stepping out of reality in a way that wasn't good, okay? And I'm not exaggerating here. Uh, and I, I was smoking a lot of weed. I mean, like six or seven joints a day and wake up, smoke weed, smoke weed all day. That was my life. And then when I went home back to Toronto, I was in Montreal for school to live with my mom. I, I would take the train and I remember I'd be carrying like a fucking garbage bag full of weed because I needed that to last me the summer because I couldn't get the good Northern Lights Montreal weed that the Hells Angels ran in Montreal and Toronto, so I would, I would be bringing it on the train with me. Even in three Ziploc bags, you could still smell it through the bag. I just figured, you know, it's not the, it's on the airplane, so no one's gonna check you on the train, but like, if someone had caught me, dude, it would be a major problem. And then I would lock it in, my, in, in, in this box, in my toolbox in my room, under three Ziploc things, and um, my mom in, in her, quote unquote cleaning, right? You guys remember when your when your mom cleans your room and she accidentally found something? Um, but what that actually means is she went snooping. I found it, found a brick of weed, and um, you know, man was I in trouble. Um, I mean, nothing good came out of smoking weed, absolutely nothing. It took a lot from me, it gave me nothing. Um, absolutely nothing, and, and, and all it did was take. I ended up failing out of university permanently. Now, I never should have been in university. I should have been starting a business. But nevertheless, um, you know, it, the impact on my life was, was disastrous. Disastrous. Uh, and even since then, like, I can't smoke anymore without getting paranoid. It, it pretty much goes to instant paranoia. Same thing with my, my ex-roommate who I went to school with, who was the pothead with me. He can't smoke anymore without getting paranoid. I mean, part of that's just that you get older and you've got, like, grown man stress to deal with all your business stuff and everything that you need to be on point with. But part of it is, you know, when you, when you blow your brains out with it, the, the side effects stay with you. Um, and, uh, yeah, dude, I, I hate weed now. There's, there's no part of me that's tempted to smoke it. Um, even, even like for a while I was trying to do it occasionally on, uh, with Fenibit, but even that's not enough. And now I live in Asia. Uh, Southeast Asia, where drug sentences are no joke. Okay, a lot of people talk to you on these forums about you can just bribe the police and whatever. It's like, believe me, dude, 
you do not want to get caught with drugs here because you can't, but not everyone's going to take that. And um, I was driving back from Pattaya. I was out with my, with my buddy there. We were on a walking street, which is like a giant uh, open air brothel. We're driving back. And of course the police have all the road checkups, you know, set up to, to get the tourists and we were on our bikes or whatever. And usually when you're on your bike, you just, you get caught, you pay a fine. I was wearing my helmet. You pay whatever for not having a license. These guys were serious. So they knew everyone was coming from walking street. They pulled you over. They were shining flashlights in your face. They went through my bike. They lifted up the seat, went through it. Dude, if I had drugs, it would have been game over. Like who knows how much a quote unquote fine you would have had to pay. I'd uh, like but a lot depending on how many guys are there. Or, I mean, it could have just been like, they had a quota of like, you know, we're gonna get someone tonight. And they will, they, they, that night they would have found some guy who picked it up at that open air market. They do the same thing when you're coming back from, from Burma, on a, if you're doing a visa run down there, Burma, they'll sell you anything, opium, weed, all that stuff. Okay, again, which you don't touch. I don't recommend you touch it anywhere, especially here, especially out here. And then on your way back from Burma, the Thai police will pull you over and go through your bike. And if you have drugs on you, especially something like opium, like, God help you, dude. Even weed. Um, you know, don't listen to these guys on the forums. It's, it's, it's serious over here, okay? So that's my experience with it. But here's, here's why I think you shouldn't smoke it. I'm going to give you four reasons. Number one, this is the biggest one, okay? This is, if you're going to listen to any reason, it's this one. It just slows you down, man, okay? Watch anyone get high. Watch how less functional they get almost immediately. Couch locked, uh, stoned. I mean, if you're trying to be a go-getter, win the game of life and, and kill it on the business level and all that, that's not helping you, okay? Um, some guys can function, some guys can be functional, and they say they're 100% functional, but they're not. They're less functional while they're high. And, then, and they're only functional because they smoke it all the time, but they're, they're still less functional when they're high, all right? Um, and then you have the guys that smoke, they don't smoke during the day, but they smoke at night. I worked with uh, a couple of these guys in, in sales. Pretty much everyone had a vice. I worked with two guys that were really good salesmen, really hard workers, but they would smoke weed. They would go home and smoke weed every night. And these guys were in their thirties and, um, it was their thing. They thought it wasn't a big deal and they were good salesmen, but one sat on one side of me, the other one sat on the other side of me. If I wanted to get their attention, I'd have to call their name three or four times. Because they're not, they're, mentally they weren't there. They, they, I would be like, John, John, Andrew, 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 uh, what? Right? Like, he's not hearing me call his name from here. Okay? Because he's slower. He's slower. Weed will slow you down. Um... And the other thing is using these guys as an example again. So they were going home at night and smoking weed. I was going home building this business I'm talking to you from right now that got me free, that got me never having to work a job again, okay? They could have built a business. These are good sales guys. They could have done anything, any kind of a sales job, any kind of a sales, sales service-based business, which is what I recommend. Could have been making double what they're making now. They're both still working the same job, pounding out 100 cold calls a day. Uh, same pressure, same bullshit boss and I believe that that if they hadn't been smoking the weed they could and they taken all that time they could add businesses um, it's a big deal it's a big deal and those guys are probably more um, advanced than if you're 18 to 25 okay if you're 18 to 25 this is like the make or break time whether you're gonna get you know this is where you want to get your life together and you can go off on a couple different paths. You, you can go off on that pothead path or that doing drugs path or that not taking life serious path. And that's really going to cost you when you're 28, 30, 35, 40, okay? Like you want to take all that energy that you have when you're young and throw it into like, you know, being great from day one, okay? And weed is going to slow you down big time. It's going to make you lazy. I can't tell you how many times when I was in school, I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to do this project. And the second I smoke weed, I'm like, ah, I'm not doing it. I'm just going to stay here and watch, watch TV, you know, get up at six o'clock at night, six o'clock at night, eat cheeseburgers for, for breakfast, which was at dinner time, 
smoke a hundred cigarettes and then like hang out with my buddy on the couch watching Conan O'Brien smoking weed and, and, and going to bed at fucking eight o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning. I mean, you can fall into that lifestyle or God forbid you can, you can slide into doing worse drugs. Luckily I never, I was afraid of cocaine. I was afraid of all that stuff. I never, I never used those drugs, but uh, you get into those and it's like, dude, you're in big, big trouble. Okay. Um, if you're, if you're young, it can derail you off the path to success. I mean, you could have everything lined up. You could have the chores, you could have the tasks, you could have the business that you want to run and you smoke weed. And then all you want to do is just jerk off and eat and have a nap. Okay. I know that's, that's what I would do in university. That's what I would do. I mean, like, and then at night or whatever, like we try and go out and chase girls, like nothing productive, nothing, nothing productive. Okay. Um, even if you are able to be a bit productive on it, it's slowing you down. It's slowing you down. I bet money on that. Number two, it could be dangerous to your mental health. This is one that a lot of people underestimate. Um, but again, by the end I had auditory footsteps. So I'm walking home at night and I could hear footsteps behind me, auditory hallucinations after smoking that much weed, all right? Um, again, I came across some uncomfortable lines where it was like, is this real? Am I really here? And, um, you know, when you're sober or whatever and you're meditating, these are things you can contemplate and you have a strong mind. But, but when I was high, it was, um, there were a few times where I was a bit scared. Uh, depression, weed, weed for sure amplified. I mean, I was going through some, I didn't have a mission. I was going through a lot of things at that time, but weed definitely amplified that that depressive state. Okay, it, weed smoking weed every day does not end up making you happier. I'll tell you that it does not give you more energy. It takes energy from you. Okay, and uh, especially the weed today, the high THC stuff. That's a powerful psychedelic. Um, I also worked in a psych ward as security on the night shift there. My mom worked. 30 years as a psych nurse and many, many schizophrenic patients, their first schizophrenic break came from smoking weed. Okay. Like if you have a history of mental illness in your family, like most of those schizophrenics, they would have a history of mental illness, but it would be something that triggered them. It would be a trauma or a stress or, you know, weed or LSD taking one of those drugs. Believe me, dude, I've seen a lot of them. I worked there for a year. My mom worked with these people. Uh, if you have a history of mental illness in your family um, and you're young and uh, maybe you've had experience with depression, be careful. Be careful. Um, weed, weed in general does not make you feel more calm. It's going to make you feel more, feel more fear, fearful for most people. So, I mean, another reason not to use it. Like, it can be seriously dangerous to your mental health. Okay, people will say, like, Weed's never killed anyone. Um, more people die in drunk driving accidents than weed. Uh, weed is better for you, is, is less harmful on your body than, than alcohol. And I would agree on those, but that doesn't negate the fact that you, it, it is a psychedelic and it is potentially dangerous to your mental health. And I've experienced those symptoms myself, so I know what I'm talking about. And I've seen them up close and personal in a psych hospital and through my mom's experience as a psych nurse, okay? Number three, uh, it's illegal. Might not be a big deterrent for most of you. And in some states it's legal, but you know, some states down south, if they pull you over with a bag of weed in your car, you're in fucking trouble. If you're, if you're caught with weed over here, you're in big trouble, dude. Big trouble. Especially if it's like a bag, like you buy in bulk for yourself, you know, you got in the car or whatever. And you buy in bulk because you smoke so much during the month, and now you gotta explain that you're not a dealer, it's just your personal use. Not good, okay? Some states you're good, but some, those southern states, I think it's a problem. And some countries, like Asia right now, Thailand, bad news. Philippines, they kill you for it. They kill you for, for having drugs. Middle East, you're fucked, okay? So, so if you wanna travel, Right. If you want to travel, better not to have a habit that's illegal in the places that you're going to be going to. Okay. And 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 a real punishment and a real put you in like real fucked up jails. Okay. The jails over here are 
you look around and you see like a nice peaceful country and the jails are no joke over here. Horrendous. Yeah, you don't want to go there. Number four, you have to hide it. Um, weed smells, okay? The guys that I worked with that smoked weed, they wouldn't tell you that until you got to know them. They were, they were ashamed that they smoked weed. They had to hide it at work. Uh, they hide it. They hid it from their boss. If you're young and you're still living at home, you have to hide the smell from your mom. You have to go. I can't tell you how many times you, you go wash your hands to get the smell off. Maybe from your girlfriend who doesn't like that you smoke weed. Um, if you have a job, your coworkers, or even if you're an, if you're an entrepreneur, you don't want your employees probably smelling you coming in reeking like weed. Okay, it is not a socially acceptable drug. Um, you can say you don't care about social acceptance, but that's bullshit. All right, we're all social animals, um, and if you come in smelling like weed to a business meeting or a client meeting, people are going to look down on you. If you're always smelling like weed, people are gonna look down on you. That's a fact, okay? As opposed to alcohol where uh, if you're meeting clients for a business lunch, not only is drinking okay, it's probably encouraged. The same thing if you're, if you're meeting clients or potential clients on a Friday night going out for a couple of drinks, the alcohol will actually help you close the deal. All right, now look, I think it's better if you don't, I drink, I think it's better if you don't drink if you're just high on life, I think that's ideal. Um, but as far as between weed or alcohol goes as a social habit, like the alcohol is, is much more socially acceptable. It's, it's, it can be useful in business scenarios. Um, you don't really have to hide it unless you're like drinking at nine o'clock in the morning and the social acceptance, that's a real thing, man. That's a real thing. And I mean, you might think that, you know, it, it's acceptable because you're a young guy and in your social circle, you know, everyone smokes weed, but like, dude, if, if you smoke weed and put that up on Facebook, your, your employer is going to check that, right? Your clients are going to like, look at your Facebook and stuff. Okay. And you can lose business. You can lose money because a lot of people don't think it's socially acceptable. Your parents are going to see that. So like when you have weed in your life, it's going to be a secret, maybe not to everyone, but there's, there's going to be people that you have to hide it from. Um, and you know, that just adds another layer of complication and, and washing your hands and all these things. Okay. Number five destroys your discipline. Okay. Smoke weed and that diet's going off the rails, dude. You're going to eat that pizza. Um, you're going to eat the pizza. You're going to eat the cookies. You're going to eat all the ice cream. Dude, I would just, I would smoke weed and I would just, I would just, we would just go to the store, me and my buddy, like this is what we would do for like months, dude. This is what we did in our, this is how we spent our fucking, you know, 20 years old. And we were like, dude, let's go to the store. Okay, we're going to get cheeseburgers. We're going to get ice cream. We're going to get cookies. We're going to watch Super Troopers. So like we'd watch weed movies, we'd smoke weed, and then we'd, we'd plan before we smoke weed we'd already have all this junk food in the house so that we didn't have to go anywhere and we could just destroy our discipline and get fat sitting on the couch, okay? You smoke weed, you're gonna overeat. You smoke weed, you're probably not gonna go to the gym. Probably not, okay? You're probably gonna skip a few things on your task list. Probably forget, gonna forget a few things on your task list too because you're slower. So, five reasons right there, okay? Especially if you're young. The big one is, is, is it slows you down. The functional, the non-functional, um, uh, like big time is going to slow you down and, uh, can lead you off the wrong path, can, can pull you away from that, that hardcore path to success. Uh, lastly though, I said I was going to give you an exception. The exception to the rule is, uh, you're mentally healthy. You're a bit older. You're already on your path and, uh, weed is your thing Friday, Saturday night, instead of, instead of going out to the bar with your friends, um, you know, your reward for killing it during the week, doing everything you're supposed to do is maybe you smoke weed with your girl, watch a movie, have sex, have weed sex. That's the one thing that, that weed actually, that's the one area where actually weed gives you, like it, it does make sex better. But, so that's your reward. Like you and your girl smoke weed Friday, Saturday night, and that's it, like maybe one joint. After you've done everything that you're supposed to do and you don't get paranoid, you're not tempted to smoke every night, um, doesn't slow you down too much. 
mentally healthy, you're good, you're good to go on that. Um, you know, if anything, if you can do it like that in moderation, you've got everything together, like it, it probably get less of a hangover than, than you would from alcohol. So, um, that's the exception, but like from up for a lot of you guys, especially if you're young, especially if you don't have all your goals together and you're not on the path, like get, get, get rid of that weed for, you know, get rid of that weed dude. Cause it's just going to slow you down. That's all that other stuff. So hope you found that useful. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments.